we pause on All Ireland Hurling final day for our national anthem. From 3.30 this afternoon, every puck, goal, point, block, hook, clash, roar, cut, whistle, gasp, cheer has history. History with a capital D. History of our DNA. History of our families. It goes back all the way to Coo Cullen. John Milan, I love my country. Joe Connolly on the steps of the Hogan stand in 1980 when he said, young people of Galway, I love you. The All-Ireland hurling final between Galway and Waterford has never happened before. Throwing is about to happen. And it's up. Wherever you're watching, 195 countries around the world watching this on GA Go. We hope you enjoy it. It's Galway, won the toss, playing from left to right. Gathering it first time is called Manuel laying it off first, Joe Canny. Not marked once or twice, but indeed three times. Gets away from the shackles of the Waterford defence and moves forward and in front of the Cusick stand. Puts it straight between the posts and over the bar. Yeah, Marty, great start for Joe Canny. What an atmosphere. He used his strength there, he broke the tackle and over his shoulder, we've seen that many times, that'll settle him, just looking at Jonathan, Jonathan Glynn gone in, full forward as we expected, Cahill Manny at centre forward, Joe Canning out in the wing, few changes early on, and um, the ref going in here now, is there a little bit of doubt maybe, I think there was a bit of a clash off the ball, Barry Cochran and, and Jonathan Glynn just before the throw in, uh, a bit of pushing and shoving, it didn't look anything too serious, but the, the referee got... The referee there just going down to Sean Bradshaw and Mickey Butler, down at the Davin end, they're uh, his umpires. Big day for this man, 38 years of age. A postman operating out of Thurlis. His route is around Ballangarry. Good uh, communication with his umpires, giving a little bit of warning to those two players. So where we go. Stephen O'Keefe with his first puck out of the All-Ireland Hurling Final, dropping it just on the Galway 45-meter line. Picked up by Porek Banyan. Laying it down for us, Joe Camp. Good work here by Kieran Bennett. Made his championship debut against Cork in the semi-final and played well. Pass goes astray. Picked up by Johnny Cohen. Played corner back. 2012 and 2015. Now midfield. What a run. Johnny Cohen from Lock Ray. Flicks it over the ball. It's a second point for Goldman. Very impressive. Yeah, Martin, what you see there is all the water for that's backing off. They're so obsessed with Mark and Rowe, man. No one picked up Johnny Cohen. He's having a great year in the middle of the field for Galway, and that's a great piece of skill. And that ball was given away. A great touch by Kieran Bennett, first of all, but then poked away, and the nerves evident from Waterford early. Stephen O'Keefe giving it over to us as captain, Kevin Moore. Sign of the nerves, as Michael Dygan says. David Burke, the captain, giving it short. Crossfield ball. Coming forward at pace is Joseph Cooney. Confronted by Dara Fikes. Still Cooney. Son of the legendary Joe. It's three very quick points in this All Ireland final. We still haven't played three minutes yeah. here at Grove Park. Marty, a brilliant start by Galway. Joe Canning again involved in everything so far. Brilliant diagonal ball. And Joseph Cooney just burned Dara Fies for pace there. And uh, Dara Fies picking up Joseph Cooney, but it's all Galway so far. Stephen O'Keefe wisely going a little bit short, giving a chance for the Dacia to settle a little bit. Here's Austin Gleeson. His performance will be crucial, giving it back for his Clyde de Burka. Giving it into the centre, skidding along the surface. Jamie Barron un unable to control it, and Galway go long on this occasion, dropping it in around the house. In comes Noel Connors, back for the slipper. Here comes Clyde de Burka. Giving it short, far as Dara Fives. Played so well in that All-Ireland semi-final. Giving it over for his, uh, Stephen O'Keefe, Bally Gunnerman. Change of the direction, going long. Picked up on this occasion by Aidan Hart. Aidan, son of Josie from Gort in South Galway. Stephen O'Keefe pulled the brakes. He was coming out to meet it. Decided it was better for Noel Connors to gather it. He scoops it up. There is uh, Johnny Glenn. This is Carl Mannion turning. And listen to the roar. 
Four chances, four opportunities, four striking in the Schlitter straight between the posts. Yeah, Marty, you saw there the disadvantage. Aiden Hart picked up that ball. Not a great ball inside, but Connor Whelan used his strength to just hoosh Noel Connors off the ball. And then Johnny Glynn got the ball, quick little hand pass to Cotton Manning, created the space and over the bar. And Waterford badly need a score to settle the nerves. You know, 2008, they got a terrible bad start and Kilkenny were out of sight after 15 minutes. Worrying time for Derek McGrath. Once again, Stephen O'Keefe goes long. It's the first time that Waterford get inside the goal by half of the field. It's Kevin Moore, the captain, having a shot. Brilliant goal. What a response. He did it in the semi-final. He does it in the final. When you want leadership, when you want character, when you want something special, look to the De La Salma, Kevin Moore. Yeah, Marty, brilliant ball by Brick Walsh. He got the ball, what he does over the years, laid it off. But Kevin Moore, what composure. He just picked the spot, stuck it in the corner of the net. A brilliant goal. And if you say if they ever needed Kevin Moore, what a leader over the last 12 years for Waterford. And that's brilliant, and that's what they needed. That will certainly settle the nerves because Galway looked awesome in the opening three and a half minutes or so. Now they're getting more stuck in the dish. Waterford with possession, giving it over first power fights. Wonderful block down on this occasion by Joseph Cooney. Skipping it into the middle. Out comes Ty de Burke calling for it as the pig farmer from Turin. Shane Fives gathering it. Has to work himself out of trouble. Gathering it in turn is Shane Bennett using the hand pass. And Waterford begin to get a little bit of momentum with the Bennett brothers. Into the centre, scooping it away as David Park, trying to knock it into the path of right corner back Adrian Tuhi from Baha. Here comes Torrig Banyan. Banyan going forward, being chased by three Waterford players, including Austin Gleason. Lovely hook by the Mount Sinai. It's a real blistering case. Lovely skill. Great stick work. Great wrist work by Connor Wheeler. No free, no opportunity. Gives it back first. Connor Coney. The umpire looks at raising a white flag. Five real opportunities. Five points by Galway. And Marty, two massive features of the game so far. No freeze. Fergal Horg is letting the game flow. He's not, you know, he's not stopping for every little thing. And Galway, five out of five, as you said. Their teamwork up front, incredible so far. Breaking ball picked up by Craig de Borca. Going long, up first, Michael Brick Walsh, but accurate. With him is John Handbrook. Stradbally man, twisting and turning, trying to get inside. The cover of the left corner back, good work on this occasion. Oh, Kevin Moore came in with a thundering challenge. The referee blows his whistle. And I think he's right. Yeah, well, the fir first thing there, no support whatsoever for Big Walsh, no one within 30, 40 yards. And watch this, Kevin Moore. John Hanbury was just bent down over. Came in with the shoulder. It's the sixth minute of the All-Ireland Hurling Final and there is a standing ovation which has been organised by the people of Galway and salute of Tony Keady. We all stand up. The sixth minute because he wore the number six jersey in the 1988 All-Ireland Final. A beautiful gesture for a great man. Back into the action, it's Ty de Burka, scooping the ball, giving it long, dropping it into the middle of the field. Breaking ball, waiting for it cleverly on this occasion. And look at the space for David Burke. There's an opportunity here, David Burke, with ease, puts it over the ball. Johnny Cohen, Joseph Cooney, Joe Canney, Connor Cooney, Cahill Mannion and David Burke, all scoring points from play. Yeah, look at the room he has with all the defenders Waterford have. And John Hanbury has an impressive start over there on Michael Brick Walsh. Good, great ball, just a composure to look up and, and pick out David Burke. Six scoring opportunities so far for Galway. Six points. Nice pick up on this occasion by Torrig Mahoney. Giving it back fires Dara Fives. Keeping it along the wing in front of the Hogan stand. In comes Shane Bennett, scooping it up. With him is Adrian Tuhi. Good defender. Referee felt, however, that uh, there was an infringement. Despite Guy Burke was coming away with the ball, it is a free in for Waterford, just outside the 20 metre line. I thought that was good defending by Adrian Tuhi. No, I thought I thought Parik Mahoney was fouled before that. He went down on the ball further out the field, um, but I didn't see a whole lot in that. That looked to me, uh, Michael, as a, a legitimate challenge. Yeah, no, Adrian Tuhi, very tight man marker. No matter what a start to the game, you know, Galway are absolutely on fire. Um, we talked about the midfield battle 
uh, all week. Johnny Cohn and David Burke dominating so far, but Kevin Moore still got away to stick that ball in the net. And very open, fast game. And uh, I think Water will just be happy that little break and play. A chance here now for Parik Mahoney, an easy enough free for him. Uh, quality free taker and close the gap to two points if he, if he pops it over. On his way to Crook Park, he scored 39 points. And this one is his 40th in the championship journey to Crook Park. And I'm surprised, Marty, you know, uh, Johnny Glenn, I thought he might pick up Ty DeBurka and try to leave Barry Coughlin loose, but uh, Burka is sitting right back there in front of him, he, and he's not really a feature because he's sitting so deep. Flicked away, Michael Brick watch. Little shimmy on this occasion by Kieran Bennett. Sending it in towards Jake Dillon. Dahi Burke come back to pick up the hurling. Jake Dillon sending this in. And that is the linesman on the far side. We were looking at the umpires, but it's the linesman, Cullum Lines from Cork, that felt that the sitter had gone out over the sideline, so it's a line ball for Galway. Great catch by the umpire as well, Marty. You watch it here. Aiden Hart going to take this sideline cut. Doesn't get uh, too far with it. Michael Brick Walsh battling hard there. In comes Jamie Barron. It's Jamie that steps away from the challenge. Real bundle of energy, nice stick work. Laying it back. Well pulled on on this occasion into the centre towards Joseph Cooney. Shane Fives available. Flicks it over. Forrest Kevin Moore. Kevin Moore on the 45 meter line. One goal, one point for Kevin Moore. He is, as I mentioned before, the leader of this particular Waterford side. Yeah, we have to credit Shane Fives again there. And there's good composure on both teams now. Both teams settling in, but Shane Fives, you know, had the intelligence to look up and pick out Kevin Moore and he sticks it over the bar. Colin Callan and goes for distance. Coming across is Shane Fives. Hand passing it back. It's Kieran Bennett. Good block. Again by Galway, Bennett gets the rebound, nice stick work, but there are too many maroon and white jerseys there. Michael Brick Walsh is operating in that area as well. Once again, the linesman indicates that it's a sideline ball. This time, it's going to Waterford. Well, it really was a blistering start at the... At 3.30, Absolutely. It? Absolutely, and you, know, you have to credit Waterford after 11 minutes, back to a point, you know, they really uh, shook early on, but great touch again there by Jamie Byrne. Nice sideline cut by Austin Gleeson. Ball is dropping in, but the ball is gone to the left and wide. It's Waterford's first wide in this All-Ireland final. Jamie Byrne has been outstanding so far, and his performance again will be crucial. Colin Callan. Again, going for distance. Cahal Mannion, backing hard, so too Jonathan Glenn, but it's Jamie Barron that comes away with it. Dahi Bark, Turlock Moore man, into the centre, first the road, McInerney. Coming forward is Cahal Mannion. Little jink by his brother Pori. Back to the brother. Good play, middle of the field, he's going for the score. It's looking good from here. It's his second point. Carl Mannion is the man. Yeah, and credit again. We're talking about the assist so far. Parik Mahoney picked him out, but Carl Mannion's movement, and that's what Galway are going to try to do. They're trying to, you know, they're trying to not tuck that ball into Ty De Burke, who's free, and they're trying to create the extra man out the field. So, so far, you know, seven, seven from nearly seven chances. Great start. Pat it down. Fares Johnny Cohen. Stephen O'Keefe had options available, but that puck out to go a little bit short, which would seem to be a better strategy in this early stages of this match. Referee has had enough of this. He's going to give a throw ball. Just between the 45 and 65 metre line. Dara Fies with Jonathan Glenn. Good hands. Ferris Joe Canny. Hitting it beautifully. Perfect. Straight between the posts and over the bar. And two points for Joe Canning, two points for Carl Mann. Yeah, and that's what Johnny Glynn brings. Look how quick he wins that hard ball, and straight away he feeds it to the man. You know, he, know, he knows his limitations. He, wasn't, he was going to get hooked if he tried to puck it. A lovely little short hand pass. That's two great assists by Johnny Glynn so far. Again, Stephen O'Keefe goes long. Picked up by David Park. Under pressure from Kevin Moore. Good work by Aidan Hart. Confronted by Jake Dillon. Hart into the centre. Over for his left corner back, John Hanbury. 
gets it out of the defensive zone. Nice work and nice pick up indeed by Conor Cooney. Looking around. Take corner forward in the semi final, full forward in the final. Lovely stick work. Brilliant play. Conor Cooney joins the band of Galway Hurlers now on two points. Canning, Mannion, Cooney. That's a magic score, Marty. Look at that skill to just have that confidence in your own ability to take it off the hurl like that. And uh, Galway forwards on fire. They have been opened up for that goal, but outside of that, very comfortable around the half back line as well now. And, you know, I think Waterford haven't done that much hurling to be happy enough to be only four points behind. Took out was aimed at Austin Gleeson, picked up by Kevin Moore. Laying it back for his Dara Fives. Dropping in around Shane Bennett. Plenty of Galway defenders there. No great threat to the tribesmen. John Hanbury combining with Dahi Burke. Ty de Burke are waiting for it. Flicking it over into the space to Austin Gleeson. Front of the Hogan. Gives it an almighty puck of the ball, but it's gone to the left and wide for Waterford's second wide. Yeah, Austin has been picked up by Garrett McInerney. He drifted away from that's what he does. Uh, Ty de Burke looks to pick him out a lot in matches, and you know, we all know what Austin he hits the odd one wide, but he can score five or six as well. And Waterford will need him to be more involved in the game. Puck up by Colin Cannon, gathered superbly by Joseph Cooney, flicks it into the centre towards Johnny Cohn. Comes back to Joseph Cooney. Oh, great, great block down by Floyd Mahoney. Waterford having to work very hard. Little slick hand pass. Not once but twice. Silver Ferris, Kieran Bennett. Giving it in towards the brother. Shane getting inside the cover of Adrian Tuhi. Not for very long. Tuhi recovers. Still Shane Bennett looking around to see who's arriving. Has to go straight across towards the Cusick stand. Connor Cooney intercepts and gives it plenty of air. Ty de Burke was coming forward, knocked away by Noel Connors. Trying to give the flick hand pass. Big physical presence. And that is gone just to the right and wide off the stick of Joe Cannon. Yeah, good tackle there by Joe Cannon. Uh, big hit there and, you know, maybe had a little bit more time than he realised he could have settled, I think, and put that one over the bar. Uh, just interesting there, but there is a bit of pressure put on both sides of the poking that ball away. No support there from Shane Bennett. We saw Brick Wild chase in ever before. And uh, Conor Cooney could have used that ball better. We're back in play. Stephen O'Keefe to Ty de Burka, dropping it in around the goal where Hutz picked up by Porig Mannion. Coming forward. Still Porig Mannion. Porig Mannion catches up with him eventually. Mannion drives it in long. Ty de Burka is in there. David Burke is there as well. Ty de Burka playing well as that sweep for Down Farris. Jimmy Barrett. Gets by the initial challenge. Uses the short grip so he can't be hooked into the centre towards Michael Brickwatch. Joe Cannon chasing after him. Still Brickwatch. Over first for man. Just inside the goalway. 65 metre line. It's flying between the posts and over the bar. Kevin Moran and Porig Manny, the only Waterford hurlers to score so far. Yeah, but that's a great score. Started here by uh, Ty de Burka making a great catch. And, you know, again, Parik Mannion had time to pick out a man. He poked it into Ty de Burka and they worked it up. And Brickwatch again, brilliant work by him. Uh, had a couple of heavy tackles and over the bar. Fantastic catch by Kevin Moore. Jamie Barron gets in the way. He has to release it. Intercepting was Conor Whelan, but uh, Walford had the slither once more. Austin Gleeson going the wrong way initially. Giving it back. Far as Kieran Bennett driving it in towards that full forward line. Needs a lot of ball. Jake Dillon laying it back first. Michael Walsh. Michael Walsh pretends to go right, then goes left. Nice little chick. John Hanbury stays gold side. Here comes the brick. Front of the kills stand. On the sideline. Straight between the posts. White flag raised. Well, we've seen some great scores in the match so far, and that's up there with the best of them. What a score. There was only two. It's all poked out again. Parik Mannion on the ball. Long ball in. Colin Cannon under Parik Mannion. Dropping it in around the house again. Knocked away on this occasion. Kieran Bennett is the first to react. Here's it back first, his goalkeeper. Stephen O'Keefe cleverly knocking it away. Over first, Shane Fives cuts inside into the centre. Needs a little bit of support. The pass goes astray. Hyde de Burke is there to vacuum it up. Looks around to see who's available. Has to float it up into the sky to drop it down into the Galway half of the field. Good work on this occasion by Adrian Tuhi. Getting by the first and the second challenge. Being chased by Shane Bennett. Lays it off first to Galway captain David into the centre first, Adrian Tui. Will he score? 
He will send it to the left and wide. But great tenacity, great determination. And the number one rule for any cornerback is to get in front of your man. Yeah, he was out well, but I think he should have passed it a lot earlier. David Burke was loose in front of me, took another few yards out of the ball, and by the time Burke got it, he was under pressure. Short puck out this time, far as Barry Coughlin. Aiming again for Jake Dillon. Johnny Cohen trying to gather it up. He has the slither in hand. Lock Raymond sending it down the center. Connor Whelan back in front. Picked up on this occasion by Shane Fives. They're beginning to find their rhythm slowly. Shane Bennett skips away from Garold McInerney, but not for very long. Bennett under pressure. Great work, Garold McInerney. His dad, Jerry, who wore the famous white boots back in 1987-88, is in the stand and would love that. Ball is dropping down, tied to Borka. Somehow managed to collect it cleanly. Lays it off into the centre, gets the old one too. And it's tied to Borka that comes away with it. Again, it drops it into the Galway half of the field. Galway defensively very strong. Aiden Hart sending it into the centre. Pass, not a great one, I have to say. But it comes away with it is the St Thomas's man from the Peterswell area, David Bork, and the ball goes out over the end line and wide. When it looked wide, I think the crowd thinking that uh, yeah. Stephen O'Keefe knocked it out for 65. I wonder if he knocked it out himself, but uh, you know, Galway not using the ball as well as they did earlier on. Here's the ball in now from David Bork. Safe has probably gone wide, OK? And uh, poked out again quickly. The puck outs are happening very, very fast, and that's Johnny Cohn there just knocked it out over the line. But I think Galway and Marty not using the ball early on, the first 10, 12 minutes, they were picking out their men, uh, but now they're poking the ball long. Waterford are drawing them in, putting more pressure on out the field, and Tiger Burke is picking up an awful lot of ball over the last six or seven minutes and using it very well. Well, when you consider, Michael, the start that Galway got, at 20 minutes, they'll be disappointed, only be two in front. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, it's a funny game. Waterford are winning a lot of hard ball up front. Jake Dillon has won a few 50 50, so has Brick Walsh. Sometimes they're lacking support, but they're happy enough they're hanging in there. Derek McGrath looks focused, less concerned than what he was in the opening five minutes. Sideline ball is cut in. Plenty of maroon and white there available, including Dahi Burke. Sends it out into the right half forward position towards Joseph Cooney. And Galway come away with it again from the Waterford 65. Is that going all the way? It is. David Burke with his second point of the game. Coming into this match, he scored four times. And he certainly is a man that's on form. Well, he had a dip in form against Tip. He's normally so consistent, so brilliant in the middle of the field, and he's having a stormer so far today. So too is this man, Kevin Moore, already contributing a goal and a point. Ball is dropping in. Shane Bennett underneath it. There's a touch! There's a goal! Shouldn't really have been allowed from a goal where perspective, but somehow Shane Bennett got the touch. The Bally Sagard man got the vital interception. Was there a touch? There seemed to be. A little touch, but a huge mix-up there. Went straight in from Kieran Bennett, I think. It bounced in. Colin Callan didn't come for it. You watch here. And he went to catch it and I missed it. And Adrian Tuohy had held Shane Bennett off. It... Bad the mistake point. by Galway, but it's in the back of the net. It's on the scoreboard. Down in Waterford, look at the reaction. In the Apple Market in the city centre. Well... Shane Bennett might have gotten the credit initially, but we'll have to look at that replay it's again. One of the Bennett's anyway, they can fight about it tonight, but and here's Morris Shanahan in very early. Morris Shanahan coming in very early, Michael. So he's going to come on, and the man that's going off is Shane Bennett. We would expect Morris Shanahan to come on sometime in the second half, but not quite now. But obviously Shane Bennett has picked up an injury. Yeah, Shane Bennett looked very disappointed there. He conceded his head, obviously went over in his ankle there. Um, went through, and you know, he followed it in very well, and bad mistake by the Galway defence, but it's on the scoreboard now for Waterford. Level for the first time in Krug Park. Waterford, slow to settle. Galway, steaming forward initially, but certainly a halt to their gallop has now been produced by Waterford. And under pressure, it's the fourth wide of the game for Galway. Yeah, what Waterford are doing is they're congesting the whole middle of the field and they've loads of room inside the row for forward line, even though Galway had the extra defender, there's a little bit of hesitancy there and you could see that uh, with that goal and a couple of other times so far, not sure which man to go for the ball. Disappointment for Shane Bennett. Only 20 years of age, one of the youngest on this 
Waterford side. Hit a fair shoulder. The road back in Ireland. Good play by Waterford, I have to say. Yeah, a serious hit there by Austin Gleeson, and we saw Gareth McInerney uh, had a clash with Torek Maher the last, and he flattened him, but not this time. Gleeson, the big man, and he held his ground, and that's important. Gleeson going a little bit short, trying to find Michael Walsh. Michael Brick Walsh trying to scoop it up. With him is John Hanbrook, still going forward. Good work by Torek Mannion. And the Haska for man doing rather well at number five. This call was first free after first, I think, offensive free after 24 minutes, and it's 100 and odd yards from the goals. So it shows you the discipline of Waterford and uh, Joe's come out an awful long way. This is a long, long way even for someone with Joe's striking ability. He's just outside his own 45 meter line, as you can see now. Slither is going to drop in, in around the house. There's a connection, but. On this occasion, it's Dara Fives who's available. Keeps it down the Cusick stand side. Morris Shanahan gets his first catch in the 2017 All-Ireland Final. Loses out due to the hard work of Carl Mannion. Kieran Bennett might well be taking the credit. Either way, it was a Bennett that scored a goal in this All-Ireland Final. A second for Waterford. Crossfield ball. Noel Connors, Hurley Bing. Held back, he's trying to show to the referee, hand passes it away. Shoulder by Austin Gleason, blocked by Austin Gleason. Ball knocked away, and it literally almost went out over the sideline. Jake Dillon is in there. In comes Austin Gleason again, becoming more involved, doing the hard work. Tremendous tenacity by Waterford, but equally matched by the road McInerney. Giving it back for his Aiden Hart. Orn Moore, Mary and Gort combining. Comes back for his tie to Borkin. Won Harty Cup in All Ireland Colleges with Dun Garvin Colleges many years ago. Will be 30, 23 on the 19th of September. Can he celebrate an All Ireland senior medal by that? Morris Shannon is battling hard, surrounded by Dolly Bark. John Hanbury trying to scoop it out as Michael Brick Walsh. Referee is patient. We wait for the development. And the referee eventually says. That it's a free. It would appear that he's giving a free to Galway, judging by his hand signals there. Frantic, Marty. Uh, you know, game's gone a bit scrappy, you have to say, the last few minutes. Uh, you see a lot of players, few players down injured. There was a clash off the ball, and uh, Connor Whelan, Jonathan Glynn being well held. Now, Connor Whelan, Noel Connor's all over him, and Connor Whelan's such an influential player so far in the championship. Let's go down to the sideline for some reaction from uh, Donald O'Grady. Yeah, Marty, I'm just looking at Galway there. They seem very comfortable to be, uh, you know, knocking the ball in from uh, halfway over the line or over the bar and uh, delivering from their half-back line. But I think if they really want to make a dent in this All-Ireland final and in the Waterford defence, they have to run a bit more at Waterford, change their tactics, get the ball in low and run at them. That's the only chance. And those two goals that Waterford got have shifted the momentum towards the day show. Neil yeah, will be so disappointed to have conceded two goals, as he said, Donald. It's an interesting statistic for you. Waterford has scored 2-4, 2-3 from play, while Galway has uh, 10 points, uh, all coming from play. So, uh, well, Torek Mann has only hit one free, and Joe Cannon hit one, and as you said, was back in his own half-back line. So, very, very few fouls. Here comes Michael Brick Walsh. Oh, it's floating in. Does it have the accuracy? The umpire says no. Wide ball, third wide of the match for Waterford. 27 and a half minutes gone. The tension palpable even at this early stage. Waterford waiting for an All Ireland title since 1959. Galway since 1988. Going back to help out his defence is Jamie Barron under pressure from Connor Cooney. Shane Hives had it momentarily. He has it again. Trying to burst out the referee. And uh, the linesman having a consultation on their walkie talkies there, and the decision is to go west with this particular sideline cut. And Joe the, Canning coming here. Sorry, Marty. I see Jonathan Ling gone to centre forward now, and Barry Coughlin has followed him out, and David Burke has gone in around the full forward line, which is unusual. Dara Fives is picking him up. And Joe Canning settling this. 
to his satisfaction. He'll be 29 on the 11th of October. As the ball comes in, will he be an All-Ireland medalist at that stage? What about that? That's his third sideline cut of the championship campaign. That's a massive piece of skill, and that's the wrong side for a right-handed hurler. If you like this side of the field, uh, it's easier to curl it in, but that's a brilliant piece of skill. He cut that in over the bar, and um, Joe having a very influential first half. Waterford going to short and again to the Burke, and they're picking him out brilliantly, Stephen O'Keefe is. Very accurate fuck out by Stephen O'Keefe, down towards Ty to Burke. And I have to say, Michael, the short fuck out seems to work better for, for the Waterford side. Absolutely, even. And the Burke is such a great hurler, Marty. He's so sure on the ball, and again, a brilliant ball from down in front of Jake Dillon, and Adrian Tuhi in over his shoulder. And uh, another chance now for Parik Mahoney. Considering the way Galway started, Michael, and the way Waterford have responded, we can just talk about Waterford for a moment. Psychologically, they must be, uh, be very confident, or not very com but confident, more confident. Yeah, absolutely. I think they'd be delighted. Um, you know, they had a very, very shaky start. I know that the last goal was a soft goal, but they've stuck in and they'll love this. They'll want to keep it tight, uh, get it down to the wire, and you know, put a few doubts into the Galway mind. Galway have lost a couple of irons over the last few years. They have the experience of that. There's that's over the bar. They have the experience of losing those. Uh, but still the baggage is there and uh, Waterford, you know, only Kevin Moore and Brick Walsh here from 2008. So, you know, interesting now psychologically and uh, Waterford draw match again. Level for the second time in Crook Park. Porg Manning getting his third point of the game. Colm Cannon again goes long. Comes first, Connor Wheeler. Under a little bit of pressure. Is that going over the bar? Fantastic. Great score. Got a corner forward. Well, that's the first chance he got. A lovely little flick on there. Um, I think it was by David Burke. And that's the first puck of the Conor Whelan has got. Noel Connor's been living in his pocket. And, uh, but that just shows the confidence he has and the year he's been having. And now Noel Connor's down injured and they'll be very concerned about that. You know, both benches very forward orientated, not very much defensive uh, cover on either bench. Noel Connor's from the Passage Club. Twice an all star in his career so far, back in 2010 when he first emerged onto the team and then again two years ago. Yeah, he's he, been a he, brilliant he, player, Mark. Oh, he's been oh, outstanding. Brilliant player, uh, brilliant person, and, uh, you know, he looks down, he is one tough nut, and if he's down injured, he's hurt, and there's no doubt about that. Um, I didn't see what happened, it was just... He... Well, it's in the DNA because his dad, Noel, played for Waterford in the 1970s. And, uh, certainly a man that in his eight championship season if he was to go off injured in this all Ireland final he seems to feel that he's okay after Brendan McCann there making sure that his corner back is okay we didn't see the collision but something obviously happened because the corners doesn't go down looking. too easily yeah. meanwhile the ball is popped out into the Galway half of the field Michael Brick Walsh has the slither decides to give it back far as Dara Fives looks around gives a shot to Joseph Cooney anticipated and intercepted and away goes Cooney he's already scored once is this going to be a second it sails between the posts the Sarsfields man very sharp really worked hard for the score and he took it with style and applause yeah he's having a great year for Galway this year he's really come of age you know he's been around the panel a few years and he's always been a, a very important member of the panel but this year you know he's been brilliant uh, in the, especially in the big games and getting some great big scores Stephen O'Keefe when he goes long, Waterford seemed to have trouble getting the breaking ball. Tied to Borka, left it behind him momentarily, but lovely wrist work. Giving it into the centre. Again, Waterford just seemed to be doing better when they play it short. Dara Fies back first, tied to Borka. Now he will go long. One against two up here. Ball is dropping in. Colin Cannon has the situation under control. Gives it out to Aiden Hart. Aiden Hart looking around for options. Up front. Lots of players making diagonal runs, but none of them in space. Good work again by Shane Fives, who's playing rock solid at number two. Michael Brick Walsh steps away from the challenge, being chased on this occasion by Joe Canning, trying to knock it away from him. Michael Brick Walsh again. Even when he was on the ground, he find it difficult to stop him. He's still there and he's still battling away. In comes Mara Shanahan. Ball very close, as you can see, to the sideline. Still, the referee allows it to continue. It's a bit of a mad scramble, and eventually the referee blows the whistle and says, this is going to be a throw ball. I don't think I've ever seen anyone better than Brick Walsh winning the ball in the crowd. He's unbelievable, the amount of balls he comes up with in the tight, and uh, Joe Canning covered a lot of ground to get back to him. And Galway, a lot, look at the Galway forwards. Uh, Conor Whelan is out there, Joe Canning, Conor Cooney, all back in their own uh, half-back line. 
ball is thrown in. Michael Brick Walsh, who started the move initially, manages to hand pass it back. His work rate is phenomenal. Great vision by Paul Manning. Curls to Jimmy Byrne. Good interception by Dahi Burke. Good play by the Turlock Moorman. Minor All Ireland in 2009. Cup football with Curra Finn in 2015. Under 21 All Ireland medalist as well. That's a star player, Dahi Burke. Ball into the centre for Stephen O'Keefe. He's about to be challenged. He gets it away. One, two, three Waterford players available. Austin Gleeson, Mount Sinai, gathers it. Knocks it away. Waiting for it is Jamie Barrett. Unmarked momentarily, it's on its way. The Schlitter flies over the black spot. Jamie Barron's first point in this All-Ireland final. Yeah, and I think great discipline there by Austin Gleeson. You know, we know he loves a shot from distance, but he, Jamie Barron was in a better position. He just played a simple ball to him and Jamie drilled it over the black spot. This time Galway goes short. Aiden Hart comes away with it, dropping it into space. Dara Fives not gathering it cleanly, but going back is the time. His keeper comes out. Once again, Stephen O'Keefe under a little bit of pressure. Underneath this, good old McInerney is waiting for it. Dan Shanahan has already decided there's going to be a line ball for Waterford, but more important, Paul O'Dwyer for Carlo has decided it. Three minutes of additional time just going to be announced in this first half. Sides have been level twice after a whirlwind start by Galway. Waterford eventually pulled the brakes on their opponents and found their rhythm. Dan the man watching Jamie Barron cutting it into the centre. There's a knock on Floyd Manny, which to me looked accidental, to be honest with you, but the referee is giving a free, and there's a bit of afters going on. Referee Fergal Horgan is having none of it, and he's right. He's going to have a word with John Hanbury for that challenge. Yeah, there was a little flick there. I think it was totally accidental. I don't think it was a, a yellow card, but, it, you know, in a bit high, and uh, the ref is given the free. Yellow card for the left corner back from Rahoon, Newcastle. Binor All-Ireland winner six years ago. Meanwhile, pouring Manning getting some attention. He's only 24 years of age, fine hurler, won the Hearty Cup in All-Ireland Colleges in De La Salle, where Derek McGraw was the manager back then, and his teacher, his English teacher. There is a bond, there is a, a relationship between all these players. Starts yeah. at schools, continued on, may I say as well, with Waterford IT. You put uh, that chemistry together and you get what you see here, the Dacia in yeah. an All-Ireland final. I hope he's recovered from this. I just see it sometimes a knock, a free taker gets a knock, he can miss the free when he goes and takes it. Sometimes no harm for maybe someone else to step up and take that one. Valley Gunners, Torig Manning, taking the free. No problem to him. No, he drives it wide. And Michael Dyden, you were right. I know, I've seen it so often over the years, at club level, at county level, you get a knock like that, you're unsettled, and just that timing is out that little bit, and uh, you know, there's little things that can make a difference. Past the 36th minute, we're on the 37th now. As Torig Manning again gets involved. Referee allowing the play to continue on. And queuing up in Waterford together to get their good work again by Jamie Barron. Such a sweet hurl, great whistle. Brick Barron on its way over the bar. What a combination. Yeah, and Marty, you mentioned a few minutes ago about Waterford and their psychological. You can see them really settling into the game now. They look to be moving that bit better. The nerves are gone. That's a great little bit of interplay between Brick and uh, Jamie Barron. Brick was so selfless and Jamie Barron full of energy. And that's a super, another super point. And a level for the third time in Krug Park. Yeah, Shane Fives arguing he was being pulled. You watch there, clear jersey pulled there and a good call by Fergal Horgan. Free end for Galway on the stroke of half time, I'm sure. And Waterford would have been a little bit happier uh, to draw a level. He's listening attentively. Parry Lodge. Parry, Parry Lodge on RT Radio 1. We hope. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit of indiscipline. You know, we're just talking, this is Joe's first scorable free. He took one in his own half back line. They'd be disappointed with that. There was no danger there, and Joe doesn't generally miss these ones. Joe Canning going for his fourth point of the game. 
never in any doubt. And the men from Connacht should go in for the break, leading by one. And Barty, just a quick hello. Liam Cosgrave, the former Taoiseach, he's in the hospital in Talla. He was here in 1930 for the All-Ireland Final. Uh, born in 1920, he's 97 years of age, he's, he's a big Hurling fan. He went to school in Carron and Galway, just to wish him all the best, he's in hospital out in Talla. Three times the sides were level in this opening half. Galway started in a blitz. Five points, one after the other. Then Kevin Moran got a goal after four minutes, and then Kieran Bennett got a second, we think, after 22. If he didn't, his brother got it. Three times level, half-time score. Galway, 14 points. Waterford 2-7. A thriller in store. Don't go away. We'll be right back after the break. Thank you very much, Michael. A full house uh, was the sign that came up on the big screens just a short time ago. 82,300. That doesn't surprise me. It was impossible almost to get a ticket. Away we go, second half. Who's going to be celebrating in about 35, 40 minutes from now? Galway. Long time waiting since 1988. Waterford even longer. Way back in 1959. Paul is dropping in. In around the house is Morris Shannon. Dahi Burke is with him. A little bit of assistance in the Here's Morris Shannon. Colin Callanan goes down bravely. And back there is Porig Mannion. The reinforcements arrive just in time. And Mannion lays it off, far as Garod McInerney. Garod under a little bit of pressure. Not one, but two Waterford players. Austin Gleeson. Jake Dillon in there as well. Another mad scramble. Torrig Mannion again, throwing himself around the place, bravely, courageously. He's such a fine hurler. Referee Fergal Horgan has blown the whistle, and he's going to give it through a ball. In comes Kevin Moore. It's the captain. Still going forward, he's gone past... Uh, Three of the goal will adds. Back there is Aiden Hart. In again comes Kevin Moore, now working hard without the ball. The tenacity, the determination of both of these uh, teams is very impressive. Johnny Cohen, nice little bit of stick work. Gathers it up and gives it long. Clyde de Barker comes across. Gives it low. Over fires Dara Fives. Quick hands. Back fires de Burke again. Pulls the brakes. Turns around and lets fly into the Galway half of the field. It's game on now for this All Ireland title. Michael Brick Walsh, the getting to know each other is over officially at half time. Way comes Adrian Tui. Yeah, he caught it three times. A good call by Fergal Horgan. Straight in. And uh, Marty, you can see the, the pressure that Waterford are putting on. Galway are trying not to hit it long, they're trying to work it out. But the pressure that Austin Gleason there, on at least four occasions in the game, he's dispossessed Galway men. And you just watch Tui. I think Brick Walsh might have been fouled there as well. But Tui burst out with this ball and caught it three times at this level. That's unforgivable. Remember the scoreline, Galway 14 points, Waterford 2-7. This to level the match for the fourth time. Three times level in the first half. And as we saw with our panel just confirming that Kieran Bennett was the score, that Schlitter going all the way past Cullum Callanan, which will disappoint this man in particular, Michal Dunahu, in his second year in charge. Porig Mann stands over the Schlitter, focused as always. Outside the 45, hits the ball, straight between the pulse and over the bar. His fourth point of the game. Well, Marty C. Joe Canning now at centre forward. He spent the first half at left half forward. Uh, Johnny Ling gone back inside, Connor Wheel and Connor Cooney. And um, just interesting to see how can Joe get on more ball. Uh, Johnny Lynn struggling a bit. He had a couple of assists in the first half, but looking a bit rusty considering it's his first start in two years for Galway. Nice pick up by Jamie Barron. Nice stick work again. Good hands. Look at that. Sharp. Focus. Giving it back to Dara Fives, who's also working hard. Ball up for us. Jake Dillon, who got the last touch, linesman says. Galway. Once again, the tension is palpable in Crook Park. I haven't felt that much tension, I suppose, in All-Ireland final in a long time, but there is almost an eerie silence when there is nothing happening, there is no cheering, everybody focused on what's happening on the field and indeed... Yeah, and the hurling is like that, Marty, it stops start, you know, there's an awful lot of nerves, it's just about getting over the line for whichever team can win this one. Aidan Hart puts it in, chasing after it is Conor Whelan, got one chance, one opportunity, and he's going for a second, getting by Noel Connors and Tide de Burka. Still, the referee allows the advantage, now I think he's going to whistle. And Connor Whelan running at the water for defence. 
asks serious questions because he got past Noel Connors. Then it was tied to Burke. There's the foul there, unquestionably. Correct call. Yeah, right call. Um, and I think Gerald Lucknam was just saying it at half time. That goal we have to do more of that if they want to win this. They have to use that pace up front, take them on. And uh, Conor Whelan, you know, he is having a brilliant year, very strong. Had a great game for the under 21s, even though they were beaten last Saturday as well against Limerick. And Joe Cannon with his fifth point in a match. And puts Galway just a little bit in front. 15 points to 2 8. Yeah, an interesting Austin Gleason right up on the 21 yard line now. Gary McInerney picking him up, and uh, obviously the long puck out with a bit of wind, I think, with them is going to be a feature in the second half. Puck out by Stephen O'Keefe for Shanahan. He's on the slipper, cutting inside. Thought about giving a hand pass, got inside the cover and then drove it wide. And to be fair to Morris, as he was getting off the ground, he was apologising to Parag Mann. He obviously said, lay it back. Morris didn't hear it. He went for the score. Just for the record, that's Waterford's fifth wide of the game. It's that close. Nip and tuck. Jonathan Glenn played a bit of football in New York in the Bronx and Gaelic Park over the last two years. He's without a hurley at the moment. It comes for us, Jamie Barron. Jamie from Four My Water. Lovely hands. And away goes Jamie. Past the 45. Good old McInerney with him. He lays it back. Ferris O'Mahony. Mamani from Ballygonner. And that's great play. Five points for Porig Mahony. Created, produced by Jamie Barron. Finished by Porig Mahony. Yeah, and Jamie Barron. Absolutely brilliant this year for Waterford. Had quite enough first 10 minutes, but he's after powering into the game. He scored two great points. And again, that selflessness that you, 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 you take for granted from Jamie Barron. A brilliant point by Mahoney. Like so many players playing in this All-Ireland hurling final. Played Fitzgibbon Cup with University College Cork. Jamie Barron is one of those. Ball comes down for us. David Burke gives it back for us. Got old back in early. The game beginning to sparkle a little bit. Cutting inside Joseph Cooney. Cutting into the space for great tenacious defending by Waterford there is nobody at home and Ty de Burke has all day long to even perhaps even have a quick cup of tea as he drives it up into the goal by half of the field in comes David Park the referee blows his whistle Derek McGrath is concerned about Jake Dillon who's not alone his team player for Waterford but he's also his club mate as uh, this is what happened with David Burke coming across on Jake Dillon. The referee blowing the whistle immediately and he's giving a yellow card to the Galway captain. Yeah, and proper order as well, no missed time tackle. He wasn't going to get there and he still followed through. Caught Jake Dillon down top of the head and probably lucky enough that it's only a yellow. But you saw Joseph Cooney there, Marty, just making this point. Galway are all coming out the field. There's no options inside, and uh, Waterford just sucking them into the, to the game plan. They're using the ball a lot better, playing it down the wings, creating that 50-50 ball again, and that's working for them. And you know, Michael, if you're at club level, under 12s, minors, under 21s, you'll emphasise to every team, work, work, work. That is the secret of what Waterford are doing at the moment. Yeah, and great athleticism as well around that middle of the field, over Kevin Moore and Jamie Barron in particular. Parig Mahoney. Hiding it in. Over the barrel. Over the crossbar. Listen to the roar of the Waterford fans. They're beginning to believe again. Much better experience for them in this All-Ireland final than what they had nine years ago against Kilkenny. They are producing a performance. Changes being made on the Galway side. Nile Burke is coming on for Jonathan Glenn. They are ready. It's welcome to the All-Ireland Final. And while all that is going on, Adrian Tui hand passes it over towards John Hanbrook. Good work on this occasion by Conor Cooney, leaving it in low. Referee blows the whistle. Kyle Burke was being fouled by Shane Fives, who were getting to know each other a little bit earlier. No doubt about the free. Yeah, very clever ball there by Conor Cooney. You can see that. He saw the... The move inside and uh, Shane Fives again out over Niall Burke and ref having a word with the two of them as well since Niall Burke come on they've done a lot of shouldering into each other just laying down a bit of a marker there I think Fergal Horgan three times an all-star two All-Ireland minor two under 21s that's Joe Canning CV and the four club Marty would he swap them all for one of these 
That's I the question. I think, I think, he, think he, would. he would. Joe Gannett hits it spot on. Straight over the black spot. Size level in Croke Park for the sixth time. Quick ball by Stephen O'Keefe and it's dropped long into the goal by half and oh, What about that? What about that for a catch? Guess who? It's Austin Gleeson. Six against six. McInerney against Gleeson. Still Austin Gleeson. Aussie. It takes three goal by men to stop it. Ball is loose and available. David Burke is in there. Jimmy Barron chasing Aiden Hart. Aiden Hart, little jink to the left. And whips it down the field. Good wrist down towards Connor Wheeler. Battle with Noel Connors. Wheeler, little push on the passage man. Free to all Waterford. 82,300. Let their feelings be known. Yeah, the accessible levels have gone up. Yeah, first little bit of a jizz of it. What a catch by Austin Gleeson. And I have to say, I felt he was fouled after that. He went across the field. Um, thought he was fouled. He didn't get the free in. And Noel Connors, I've mentioned him a lot of times already. The man marking job that he's doing on, on Wheel and the Mint. Tag to Burka, dropping it in again. Morris Shanahan knocks it down, goes back to Catherwood. In comes Aiden Hart, hefty shoulder. Aiden Hart goes down, comes back outside, use of a short grip, and it's grip between the pulse and over the bar. It is Porig Manny's seventh point of the game. Yeah, that's four from play. He's given Porig Manny an absolute roasting over there in that wing. He's so clever. Just watch where he's moving, his positioning all the time. He's looking for that, standing out, letting other men go for the ball and picking up that loose one. A great ball by Morris Shanahan out to him and a great score. Colin Callan goes long, runs on for David Burke on a yellow card, the captain of the tribesmen, a leader from the St. Thomas's Club. His dad was manager of the St. Thomas's Club that won the All-Ireland back in 2013, one of six brothers steeped in hurling, loved their hurling in Peter's well. 45 minutes on the clock, nobody, but nobody going away. This is going all the way to the wire. Picked, Picked up, off the, up off the ground, John Hanbury, he tried to flick it up, Fergal Horgan saw it, correct call, yet again. You know, we've seen a couple of things, it never see, look, that was so obvious, he still did it. Uh, Adrian Toohey came out, caught it three times. All Ireland finals, you know, there's so much pressure on, you're going to make those sort of mistakes, and it's whoever can eradicate them. You saw the mistake for the goal, you know, Galway, that's, that's a goal and two points that they've given away from very, very silly mistakes. They're beginning to believe. Meanwhile, down the sideline, quick management conversation. Will we make a move? And on the field of play, Porig Mahoney concentrates on hitting the slipper. Down into the Davin end for his eighth point of the match. Galway, 17 points. Waterford, 212. Colin Cannon goes long, this time with the puck out. Knocked away, sweetly. Torek Mann giving the ball away on this occasion. Aiden Hart just took his eye off it. Jittery nerves. The road back in early. Being challenged by Michael Brickwatch. Lays it off as Johnny Cohn. Gets by first challenge. Heading for the second. Knocked away, Joseph Cooney, passes going astray. Waterford playing with this tenacity. They're on a roll at the moment. And look at who's available. Where are the Galway defenders? It's the leader, it's the captain. It's Kevin Moore, and then he's driven in wide. He really had acres of Cook Park ahead of him. He should have kept going. Well, a brilliant ball by Parik Mahoney. He kicked him out, but look at the jitters, the nerves. I mentioned it there in the last few minutes. Galway there, Johnny Cohn runs through, gives away the ball. And great, great opportunity there for Kevin Moore, and he'll know better than anyone. That was a simple chance. Again, Colin Cannon goes long. Two against two. Comes far as Niall Burke. Can he make an impact since being introduced? The body language would suggest that he's happy with that. It's over the bar. Good score. And this is what he can do. Marty's a street player. If he gets on a roll, he's capable of putting three or four balls over the bar. That's a great score from out on the sideline. And he's one of three as well since he came on. Good, great substitution. Waterford making further changes. We've seen it before. Brian O'Halloran is coming on. And uh, the player that's going off is Jake Diller, who's played his part. He's worked hard. 
Yeah, he's worked really hard in the system. You know, he knows what's coming, but he he really has um, been selfless out there. And you see, uh, Brian O'Halloran, what taste this man has now. And this is what he brings. He brings a completely different dimension to the game. And this is a tactic of Waterford all year. Short ball, and O'Keefe will launch it right up into the square now. It's dropping from the sky. Dropping, dropping. Loose available ball. Picked up on this occasion by John Hanbury. Goes long, goes straight down the middle. Goal Connors, Connor Wheeler. Kicks the forward for his nine buck. Will he jink to the right? Will he go it alone? He'll tap it over the bar. He's only been on a couple of minutes, but nine buck from Ormore Mary has already made an impression. Yeah, Connor Whelan very sharp there again. Just a little flick out. Waterford using this one again. This time Galway put the pressure on. With the result that the ball is dropping just a little bit shorter than normal. There's a chop down. Fergal Horgan, the referee, spotting it. I have to say, I think Fergal Horgan is doing very I well. Was call I point. was just going to say, Marty, he's absolutely spot on. Every call he's made, um, you know, hopefully don't put the jinx on him now. And you know, but he's been he's been very very sharp. He let the game flow in the first half, only a couple of frees, but everything that he's pulled up has been a free. Free going to be taken between the 45 and 65. Galway half of the field. Yeah, I think uh, Dan Shannon out having a word of Austin Gleeson, you know, he hasn't really been in the game. They need to get him on the ball. Um, he hasn't scored. And you know, you'd imagine to win this, they're going to need a couple of points from Gleeson. He's going for it. And the slither is over the crossbar. Yeah, that, well into Hill 16. Yeah, that's a great response by Galway. They went the point down, they've scored the last three points now to put themselves a couple of points up, and that's a great strike by Joe Canning. Two points between the teams, 20 minutes to go in the championship of 2017. Donnie Buck beating Morris Shannon and winning himself for free. Yeah, and I think Waterford changed their tactic. They're tucking every ball down high. You have Donnie Burke, Garrett McInerney, you know, very, very strong in the air. They're winning that breaking ball. And I thought when they were working the ball, maybe out the wing with a shorter puck out in the first half and then playing it up the sides, you know, it was working better for them. And I presume, Michael, that's because of the presence of Mario Shannon. Once he's in there, they're kind of... They're trying to find him with the long one, but it's not working. <laughs> Colin Callanan, who was third-choice goalkeeper back in 2012 behind James Cahill and Fergal Flannery. Three years later, all-star goalkeeper, 2015. Shane Fives got us that. Tied to Burke, a little bit too high. Had to scoop it up, didn't fall. He's under a little bit of pressure here. Good work by Ty de Burke. Drops it down into the middle of the field. Nicely picked up by David Burke. Burke hits an almighty wallop of the slipper. And it's straight over the bar for his fourth point of the game. Well, he's one of the great midfielders, Marty, of any era. And, you know, one little blip against Tip, and there was a lot of people worrying about all Ireland final day, captain of Galway, four points from play. What a, what a leader he is today out there. Johnny Cohen won as well. The midfield battle, brilliant. Moore and Barron having their moments as well. But Galway edging at the moment. Five from play now from the two Galway midfielders. The momentum seems to have swung from the sunny southeast up to the west. Now can Waterford, with Brian O'Halloran and Morris Shannon operating up front, come back. Brian O'Halloran! What a fantastic point! That is a thing of beauty. Well, it wasn't the percentage shot. I was going to say, he's, you know, maybe no support. But look at that, the confidence to do that. And game really opening up now. Last four or five brilliant scores from play. Uh, we've seen Niall Burke with a couple, Dahi Burke, or David Burke, and now that one from Brian O'Halloran. That was badly needed. Galway, you know, on a roll. And um, super score, Brian O'Halloran has made a massive difference in every game this year when he's come in. Two points between the teams again. Joe Canning has picked up an injury, and there's a bit of concern in the middle of the field that he's... Only OK. Uh, let's get down to the sideline to Donald. Donald Gredding? Yes, Marty, and I'm just looking at Galway there. They won the last few puck outs from uh, long range puck outs from Seymour Keeper. I think that they, you know, they have an extra man in defence themselves, so I think Colin Callum will have to hit him with the puck outs and then work the ball from their half back line to the half forward and then run at Waterford. I think they'll get more purchase there if they do that rather than just levelling the ball in because Ty De Boca has been on the ball five or six times since the uh, second half and he's a big influence for Waterford. 16 man, the Waterford fans trying to get behind their team, trying to give them a lift with just about 17 minutes ago. Just two points between the teams. Well, we're going to make a change. That's uh, Jason Flynn that's uh, going to be introduced. Another very tall 
man indeed, six foot five, going to be introduced as the ball dropping down. Picked up in this, or almost picked up by Kevin Moore. Galway had the jittery nerves about 10 minutes ago. Now it's Waterford's turn. Shane Fives again back him up. Kai De Burka throws the ball up into the air. Goes for height so he can't be hooked or blocked. Falls down nicely for Farid Mann. Does something similar. They're aiming for Morris Shannon. Farid Burke got a touch to it. Here comes Morris. He's going to go for it. He swung down and brought down by Aiden Hart. A free dead straight in front of the goalpost, and I'm sure Fergal Horgan is going to have a word with the Gork man as well. Yeah, Parik, like definitely Fowler, Parik Mahoney again. First of all, the way he won the breaking ball, he read where it was going to break, and then spotted the one-on-one -on -one inside. Morris did very well to hold his feet. Uh, Dahi worked very strong in the air, but Morris broke it and won the free, and Aidan Hart is going to get a yellow now to that. Fergal Horgan, the referee, wants to have a word. There's a blood... Uh, Substitution going to happen as well. Obviously, Garod picked up an injury just a moment ago, and uh, it's going to be Aiden Hart that's going to get the yellow card. That's uh, the left half back. Joined Don Hanbury as well on the yellow card list. You mentioned Jason Flynn, he's in there now as well for Cahill Mannion, and um, again, a player with massive ability on his day. Great goal poacher, and uh, interesting to see now if he can make the impact. And it's going to come down to it, it's down to the wire now, it's only going to be a point in it. What subs can make the difference and maybe swing this game? Torek Mahoney takes the free, takes the point. It's ninth of the game. One point between the teams. 2.14 Waterford, 21 points, Galway. Confirmation of the substitution that just happened. Carl Mannion off, Jason Flynn in. Waterford introduced in. Tommy Ryan. And Michael Brick Walsh is the player that's called ashore. What a legend this man is in the sunny southeast. 34 years of age. He's given it everything. Will it be enough to win an All Ireland medal? It's now the turn of Tommy Ryan, a fresh pair of legs. 55 minutes, heading towards 56. Nipping in, Jason Flynn. First touch, first shot, first score. Uh, that's brilliant anticipation. Just look at the way he picked that, how quickly he was on the, on the move there. And this guy has everything, and there's another Waterford player down injured. Two points between the teams again. Michal Dunno urging from the sideline. And Marty, what's another factor here? The subs coming on are completely different players than the players going off. Michael Brick Walsh, strong, physical. John Hambry was on. And now John Hambry has a completely different challenge on Tommy Ryan. And the same with Niall Burke coming on and on Shane Fides with Jason Flynn coming on. He's picking up Tyke de Burke. Um, and you'd be looking at it from a management point of view, should you be making a couple of changes in your defence to, to counter the different type of players that are coming on in the forwards? I certainly would be looking at that. Kieran Bennett is the player that was down injured. It looks like he's OK. Derek McGrath has uh, thrown the dice that we've become accustomed to. You can see him there, he's giving it everything. But he's thrown the dice to bringing on Morris Shanahan and Brian O'Halloran and Tommy Ryan. That, that strategy has worked all through the championship journey. Breaking ball. Picked up by David Park. Adrian Tuhi. Miss Cues. And Waterford have the possession. Shane Fives. Gives it over towards Ty De Burka. Loses in the sunshine. Jason Flynn knocking it back. Far as Joe Cannon. Turn the ball is blocked. Comes far as Kieran Bennett. The call comes from Philip Mann. Galway working hard. Hand pass. Back pass. It works. Over far as Dara Fives in the middle of the field. Waterford struggling to find their rhythm. They need a score. They get a wide. Yeah, wide ball. That was a great chance there for Dara Fives. We've seen them all during the championship, landing those ones, and uh, you know, took them five or six passes to get the ball. Good work by Jason Flynn and Joe Cannon, and Joe well blocked again. And Joe now got into full forward. I'd say his knee is at him, and uh, see will he get one chance maybe in there. Shane Fives again trying to sweep the ball up here. Linesman is in there in the middle of it. And it looks like he's going to give a throw ball here. He's undecided. Referee now arrives and uh, he's going to sort matters yeah. out. He's been informed it is a throw ball. He should, have been a, sure. should have been a goal with a ball. That could be, all these things can be crucial. Well, it could work out that way. Here <laughs> comes David Burke. Crossfield ball over towards Jason Flynn. Nipping in. Dara Fives. Vacuuming up. 
Kevin Moore trying to inspire his colleagues as the clock ticks towards the 59 minutes. It's Tommy, Tommy Ryan from Tallow. Hitting it in from in front of the Cusick. My word, score of the game perhaps in the All-Ireland Final 2017. Remember his name. Tommy Ryan. And that's what I'm talking about. John Hanbury hasn't had that threat all day. Look at that for a burst of pace by Tommy Ryan. And that's an incredible score. Off the ball, Joe Cannon, Barry Coughlin, both of them on the ground there wrestling a minute ago. I'd say Her Fergal Horgan have to go in now to sort that one out. And this Derek is exactly, McGrath. sorry, Barry, exactly what Derek McGrath would have planned for. To get it down to the last 10 minutes, be there or thereabouts, the impact of those subs. But Galway's subs have done very well since they come on as well. Intriguing, brilliant second half. I, the first half took a long time to get going, but this is, this is tactical now. It started deep inside their own half of the field. We were watching actually the incident as well. It was happening in the background. That's uh, Barry Coughlin that's being spoken to, and it's a yellow card for the uh, Valley Gunner man. Waterford fullback pleading his innocence, but to no avail. Colin Callan going to take the puck out again. Noel Connors and Manion as a collision. They all fall down, but again it's Shane Fives bursting forward. He's giving it everything, Shane Fives. He's to release the ball. And Waterford felt he was overpowering. I think he was fouled. I think he was fouled on the way out before that. You know, I think he was fouled on the way out. And uh, to be fair, look, he was pulled back there. And uh, I think a harsh, very harsh free. It's about the only decision I've seen so far that I disagree with the referee, to be honest. But uh, Shane Fives looked like uh, he was being fouled. But the referee obviously was up close. Had a better view. The free is for Galway just inside the Waterford 65 metre line. Yeah, all these calls are big, you know, the line ball there a minute ago, I thought it was a goal of the ball, they didn't get it, that's what can happen. One point between the teams. 60th minute, now passed. Joe Cannon lifts and strikes and gets his eight point of the game. Stephen O'Keefe goes short. Back pass is rather poor, I have to say. In comes Barry, comes the challenge, and Barry Coughlin from Connor Cooney, referee says play on. Gathering it is Brian O'Halloran. Ball becomes loose and available, and once again it's John Hanbury. Switching play over towards Connor Cooney. Oh, great hands. No hurling. Gets it in. There's a chance here for Mal Burke. Waterford retreats. They're in there in their numbers, and they have the slither back. Once again, a Shane Fives lays it off quickly, smartly, trying to get the pass out for his bill of banning. Galway, working so hard, adopting that essential ingredient for success. Work, work, work. Waterford were doing it earlier. Now there's another bit of this stalemate just outside the D as such, and the referee has given another throw ball. Going to throw it in quickly. Knocked away on this occasion. Ball is picked up high, and the ball is sent straight between the posts. What a score. Connor Koenig, third point of the match for the St. Thomas's man. Puck out is gathered brilliantly by David Burke. His club mate, Ampere's Jason Flair. Listen to the roar of the Galway fans. Here's Flair, here's a point. And in the twinkle of an eye, in the space of a minute and a half, the game goes towards Galway and the yeah, West. And Marty, we didn't get a chance to comment on the, on the previous score. Uh, Connor Cooney, what a point. We've seen some unbelievable points by Galway. They haven't scored many goals this year. It's all big points. Scores great touch by Tiger Burke there again. Long took out this time by Stephen O'Keefe. Gathered here by Kevin Moore. He's going for the score on the Galway 65 metre line. Is it going? No, it's not. Ball is wide. The pressure mounting on Waterford. Galway really have stepped up a gear. Yeah, and look, a big call to start Johnny Glynn, Jonathan Glynn in this game, leave off Niall Burke. He's come on and scored two. Jason Flynn has come on and scored two. Conor Cooney has three from play. Joe with two from play. Joseph Cooney, two from play. Cahill Mannion, two from play. Great spread of scores across the Galway forward line. Shane Bennett hasn't scored, he's gone off. Jake Dillon didn't score. Brick Walsh didn't score. Austin Gleeson hasn't scored. And this is what's telling now. Galway haven't scored a goal since the championship match against Dublin. But they have enough points on the board. Right now, there are four points in front, seven minutes left in the All-Ireland Final. 
history awaits. But can Waterford respond? Stephen O'Keefe going to take the free. Waterford going to make another change. Meanwhile, Stephen O'Keefe drops it in around the house. Morris Shanahan is underneath it. They attack the ball. Morris Shanahan somehow managed to gather it. Well, at least I thought he did, but he didn't. As Galway come away with it. Over first, Johnny Cohn stepping away from the challenge. Slither kicking it forward. Chasing after this is Noel Connors. With him is Mannion. Mannion. Back outside. Where is Joe Canning? Joe Canning. Beautiful skill. Beautiful. Like a ballet dancer. Michael Fletley wouldn't do it on Riverdance. Joe Canning does it in Crook Park before 82,300. But the ball is wide. Uh, Chase the film after praise now he got a rush of blood there he had all day to come down with that take his time and stick it over the bar even go on with it it was a brilliant piece of play look at that for a great catch and he'll kick himself when he looks back at that when he had all day then when he settled himself to put it over the bar and uh, you know Galway they probably need one or two more they're not home yet Colin Dumford coming on for Jamie Barron who had given absolutely everything but right now that's the scoreboard just on your television screen. 25 points to 21. 25 points to 215. Yeah. Patrick Kern is coming on. Another star forward. And the player that's going off is Kieran Bennett. Yeah, they're going to push up, I think, man on man now. And uh, God, will get a lot of room here now in the, inside in the full forward line. And will they get a goal chance? Referee again wanting the puck out to be taken as the substitution is explaining that the substitution hadn't actually fully taken place. Stephen O'Keefe changes his mind and goes down towards the Cusick stand. Linesman indicates that it is a Waterford ball. 65 and a half minutes. 29-year gap waits Michal Donahoe and the people of Galway. Is it about to end? Austin Gleeson, capable of putting this over the bar. It's dropping in, it's dropping to the right and right. And just the last few chances Marty that Waterford had, you know, Kevin Moore had a great chance there. Uh, earlier in the half, pucked it wide, he pucked another one wide. Austin Gleeson there, just at four or five when the pressure's really on, and Galway now just to be feeling one more point, you know, put them five up, it'll be very, very hard for Waterford to get back four, they're still in it. Puck out by Colin Callanan. Shane Fives goes up for it, doesn't gather it cleanly. Gone back is Kevin Moore. Trying to get away from Johnny Cohen. Two against one here. Good work this time again by Brian O'Halloran. Brian O'Halloran is fouled. Like Ty Deborka, Clash Moorman in the middle of the field. Waterford are not giving up, but they need a score badly. They need a score, but they're back to three if Park Man can put this over. That was great work by Brian O'Halloran. There was two Galway men around him, a little bit of hesitancy there from Garrod McInerney, and in popped O'Halloran, won the ball and won the free. Nine times he scored in this All Ireland final. Hits it well. It's gone to the right and wide. When you think of Austin Gleason, sideline cut, Park Man is free going wide, the momentum again swings to the west of Ireland can he produce something, he's thrown people like Colin Dumford, Maurice Shannon, Tommy Ryan, Patrick Kern all on to try and change the trend the tone of the game puck out, this time dropping deep into the Waterford half of the field, knocked away on this occasion, referee gets in the way Conor Mannion Chips it up, but uh, comes instead for Austin Gleeson. Being challenged by Connor Cooney, and the referee is giving a free to Waterford in the middle of the field. The yellow card is, I think, for slapping across Austin Gleeson there. Connor Cooney gets a yellow card. 68 minutes. Four points between the teams. Porig Manning. All eyes from Waterford watching this as it sails between the posts for his 10th point of the match. And it's back to three points.
Yeah, and fair play to Park Man. He'd missed the previous one. He's had a brilliant game for Waterford and showed brilliant nerve there to put that one over the bar. Waterford still right in this. There's going to be four or five minutes injury time allowed for all the substitutions. So there's loads and loads of time for Waterford. Shane Maloney is going to be introduced for the goal by captain David Burke. Shane Maloney who scored that winning point in the All-Ireland semi-final in 2015 against Tipperary. Very talented hurler. He waits for the ball as the slither is tucked down into the Waterford half. What a catch now, Buck. Well, I'm sure he was disappointed for being dropped for the starting 15 when Johnny Glenn got his place. But my word, Niall Burke has contributed since being introduced. Uh, absolutely brilliant, Martin. Yeah, that, it was a big call, but you can work it both ways. If Johnny Glynn had come on, would he make, he'd make a different sort of impact, but he wouldn't have that scoring threat that maybe Niall Burke has. And that, you know, obviously a little bit of pain being left off as well. And you can see that in the determination of both himself and Jason Flint since they came in. Once again, Joe Cannon will concentrate on the free. Score of eight points. Heading towards the 70th minute. The roar on Hill 16 says it all. 26 points. Galway, 216 Waterford. Back to four points again. Four minutes of additional time. Four minutes for glory. Four minutes for history. This match is historic in every sense, as I said at the beginning, with a capital H. It's a free end for Waterford. Can they produce something as we are now gone past the 70th minute? Yeah, and I think we praised Fergal Horgan. He was having a great game. I can't, again, I think that free looked very harsh to me. Again, I thought it was good defending by the goal. Well, as they had their arms out, they were disciplined, and uh, he gave the free a bit of a Hail Mary, I think, been said there. But Tariq Mahoney, he'll, he'll know there's a few minutes left. He'll just stick this over the bar and bring it back to three. And when it's three points, you're right there. Tariq Mahoney. This is his 11th point of the match. Now, 70 minutes, 49 seconds. Derek McGrath knows for the three-point game, they have a chance. Can they produce something? Urging from the Cusick, from the Hogan, from the Davin, from the Nally. Hearts and hopes of the people of Waterford and Galway await patiently, the heart pumping. Once again, we've stalemate just inside the Waterford half of the field. Tied to Burke, trying to scoop it up. Referee says there was a pull. It's a free for Waterford. If you thought the tension was bad around 3.30, trust me, at two minutes past five, it's almost unbearable. Well, this is going to land right in on the edge of the small square. Austin Gleeson dropping it in. Oh. Just to the right of the post. Marshana can't control it. Ball is wide. To Martin Sin, tucking that wide. It had to be landed in around the square. They can hardly watch until they see themselves on the screen here in football. What he's laughing about. Ball dropping down into the water for the half. Gone forward is Connor Cooney. Cuts it in, but the ball is wide. Six wide in a match for Galway. Yeah, he's out around the middle of the field. Uh, David Burke's legs were gone, I'd say. Ball gathered by Goodrood McInerney. McInerney steps forward. What an athlete, just like his dad. Giving it out for his Aiden Hart. Under a little bit of pressure. There's nobody home except Dara Fives. Gathers it. Has the time to look around, see who's available. Colin Dumford. It's the last charge. A minute and a half left. Still Colin Dumford. Pull of the jersey. Referee says play on. Shane Fives steps inside. Can they produce something out of this? Ball over to the far side. There's a little jig. There's a bullet of a shot. Stopped on this occasion. Bahi Burke lays it off for his John Hambury. Pushing forward is Tommy Ryan. John Hamburg that is it, ball bobbling all over the place. Out comes Porrig Mannion. Mannion bursting forward, looking for the free, lays it off, and the ball, ball is flicked into the water at half of the field, and they'll try again. 
try once more. Nile Burke with Pelta Burke. Ball is loose and available. Referee's whistle is blown. It's a free up for Waterford. Connor Cooney didn't hear the whistle. Neither did I, to be honest with you, but I was able to see Connor, see the referee indicate it's a free to Waterford. Yeah, a little bit of a clash of legs there, and Connor trying to hold it. This will be Waterford's last chance. Great passage of failure. Just watch here, just a little pull back. Can they get a ball in? Can they get a chance to draw it? 73 minutes, 48 seconds, 12 seconds left in the All-Ireland final. Can you bear to watch? Can you hear the roar? Because it's coming all the way from the west of Ireland. Are they about to win the All-Ireland hurling title for the first time in 29 years? They've won the Alliance League. They've won the Leinster Championship. We're on 74. That's the magic number. Wherever you are right now, Tony Keady, I know you're smiling because Galway will rejoice like never before. Is the famine over? It it's is. over! Galway are the All-Ireland champions 2017. Can you believe it? The heroes of 1988, Sylvie Lamar, Connor Hayes, Pete Finnerty, Tony Keady, Michael Coleman, Joe Cooney, Pat Malone, Anthony Cunningham, Hopper McGrath, Linsky, they have now in Galway got new heroes, new heroes that begins with Col Colum Callanan and ends with Carl Mannion. Joe Canning, who has served his county well, finally wins an All Ireland medal. Marty, unbelievable, and uh, just Tony Keady, Marty. I, you know, I have such time for the man, and you know, I try to keep you know that half time there with looking at the. Looking at the piece on him there, it's so heartbreaking for him and his family. And uh, it's just, look whether it was Waterford or Galway today. What it means to both those guys. I'm looking over here at John McLean, he's heartbroken. And I'm heartbroken for the people of Waterford, but I'm delighted for the people of Galway. That's always the way it was going to be today. And uh, well, so said, what an occasion. I know, Mike. What an emotional day. It's very emotional day. I have to say, it's been some, some match. The full time score in Croke Park, Galway. 26 points, Waterford, two goals, 17. Back in 1980, the great Joe McDonough, another great Galway man, sang here on the steps of the Hogan stand, the west away. So no matter where you are, in Baha, Gort, Lockray, Ballina Slow, New Inn, Ahaskra, Fohenna, Oramore, Mary, Gort, Tullamore, wherever you are, you can now rejoice because Galway are the All-Ireland champions. The West is truly awake, like it was for the great late Joe McDonough sang it here. Yeah, Martin, they did it with great style in the second half. The first half was cagey, as we thought it would be. Galway had a great start. Waterford got a goal against the run of play to keep them in it. But in the second half, David Burke, you know, Joseph Cooney in the first half, Niall Burke, Cahill Mannion, Conor Cooney, Jason Flynn, you know, some brilliant scores and some heroic defending. And Waterford, you know, uh, Brilliant year for them, but you know they're going to be just. I I I just can't describe how disappointed uh, they're going to be. It's been such a long wait. It's heartbreaking for them, but it's Galway's day. We have to give the credit where credit is due. They were there in 15. They were there in 12 in the replay, and Michal Dunruk came in and probably just added that little bit extra. Brought that man management style. Gave the players more responsibility. They responded, and look at great year for them. They were the most consistent team all year. They've won the league. They've won the Leinster Championship, and now they've won the All Ireland. So congrats to Galway, and look at. Heartfelt commiserations to Waterford, a great team, great sportsman, and Brick Walsh, you know, maybe the last time we'll see him out here, brilliant, brilliant man, brilliant player, uh, but it doesn't define you as a player whether you have an Ireland medal. Great players that played for Waterford over the years, and Joe Canning, you mentioned him there, he's done so much over the last 10 years for Galway, so there's no lane out in the field hugging him, most good for them all, so well done Galway. It's a wonderful day, and there's the sport of hurling, as Dan Shanahan, Dan the man, is out there. John Milan working on the radio here beside us. He's emotional, and I can understand that. And Waterford have contributed to a significant and wonderful match here in Croke Park. And while it's heartbreak for them, they can certainly look forward to the future. But right now, the day belongs to Galway. 1988, Dr. Paddy Hillary was president of Ireland. Charlie J Charles J. Hoy was Taoiseach. Ray Houghton was putting the ball in the England net for Ireland in Stuttgart. And indeed, in July 1988, a baby boy was born in Crumlin and his name was Conor McGregor. That was way back in 1988. That was when Galway last won the All-Ireland. So wherever you are in the world, if you're in Perth, New York, San Francisco, wherever, Taiwan, you've got to appreciate 
that in Galway they love their hurling. And right now they're celebrating because the famine, as I said, is finally over. Yeah, and Marty, I think important to say the players in Galway made a big call. You know, and at the time I thought Anthony Cunningham was harshly treated, but they felt it was something else needed. Michal Dunn, who Francis Ford, you know, a brilliant coach, coached at Ryan, is my home club to win the Offaly Senior Hurling Championship last year for the first time in 26 years. And look at the minors out there as well, Marty. You know, to win the minor senior double, that minor team wasn't really fancied at the start of the year, but they beat Cork in the great final here beforehand. So great day for Galway Hurling and uh, great day for Michal Dunn, who, for the management team and for everyone associated with Galway. Galway All-Ireland Champions 1923, 1980, 1987, 1988 and now today 2017. President of Ireland Michael D. Higgins, he'll know only too well what this will mean to the people of Galway. Proud Galway man today with strong Clare and Limerick roots. As the Galway fans celebrate Saw Doctors, N17, they'll all be singing in Galway. From now until Christmas, let me assure you that Galway is officially open for to be the greatest place on earth for parties and festivals and celebrations. Absolutely, and look. Is that David Burke? I don't know who that is. Heading up, but David Burke, St. Thomas, as you mentioned, a small club, uh, one in our Ireland uh, club here a few years ago uh, with his dad with five brothers on the panel, I, I think it's a savage day for, for everybody involved. But the forwards for Galway won it today, Marty. The spread of scores, we said that before. And, and Kevin, the substitutions, Mike. Yeah, but Parik Mahoney got five from play. Brick Walsh got one. From their starting forwards, that's all they got from play. And two subs got a point each. For Galway, Galway subs, Jason Flynn. Uh, Jason Flynn, two from play. Uh, Niall Burke, two from play, Joe, two from play, Joseph Cooney, two from play, Conor King, Cooney, three from play, Mannion, two from play. Let's hear the president, Thomas Lucas Gael, Egon O'Farrell, as he presents the Liam McCarthy who will spend the spring, the winter and the spring down in the West. First Cavan man to be president of the GA, he has the honour and indeed this historic moment to present Liam McCarthy to the Galway captain. It's more than I'm done. McCarthy, a glock air, son, Fern and Gulliver. We waited 29 long years, but finally, Lee McCarthy's coming back to the West. Nihal Donahoe. It's an absolute honour Margaret Keady, wife of the late Tony Keady, who's here with her family. And to be part of that tradition now is absolutely massive for me. I suppose the most special thing about GEA 15 years ago, 
I was a 12 year old lifting a cup for St. Thomas's down Nath and Rye. And the special thing about the GAA is when you can have dreams like this. And when dreams come true on days like this in September, and you get up there and you lift the cup for your county. None of this will be able to happen without these bunch of lads that are standing down the steps before me on my left. They're absolutely serious bunch of guys. The management team that have been put in place behind them, absolutely massive as well. But the work, commitment that they've put in, not only this year, but over the last number of years, to get the reward today is just for them. Also, it would be a miss of me not to mention players, past management that have gone down through the last 29 years, who put blood, sweat, tears into trying to get up these steps. And this is, uh, this is for everyone from Galway. This is for clubs, this is for family, this is for people of Galway. I can't let the day pass. 29 years ago, this man got man the match in North Ireland final in 1988. It will be missing me not to mention his name, the great Tony Keating. To Tony's wife Margaret, children Shannon, Anthony, Jake and Harry, we hope to lift the cup today. We'll give you some solace from your grief, if only for a few seconds. One other person that I can't let today pass without mentioning. He was soldier with us for years. Good friend of mine, first cousin of Conor Whelan. He passed away in 2014. Now you don't know who. We'll never forget him. We'll remember him today. We'll give a small shout out to the Terry and Terry and Peter House who are doing great work for people that are in, I suppose, depression, and hopefully they'll help many more. The next man I want to mention, we, we rarely, well, sometimes we see an eye to eye, sometimes we didn't, but I have to say, the team he brought in around him this year and last year, absolutely serious team he brought in, backroom team. This man, you have to give him the biggest round of applause of the day, me, how do you know? The backroom team, the next two lads, Francis Ford and Noel Larkin, the selectors, they put in massive work. Serious, serious guys on and off the field. The greatest characteristic about them is they're just great people to have around, great people to work with. Our coach, strength and conditioning, Lucas, he held us in serious shape. His attention to detail is, is second to none. Our medical team, Ian O'Connor, Dave Hanley, Alan Daly, Paul Armstrong. I mean, for them to put up the lights of us over the last couple of years, we thank them today. Other, other members that deserve huge mention, Jamie Joyce, Dave Morris, Chris O'Connor, the goalkeeping coach, our kit men, Derek Ford, Rory McGuire, Adrian Silver, and the great Tex Callan. Oh, 
Also Maeve, our nutritionist, Kieran Pasgrove, and Owen and the crew at Feed the Pulse would like to thank them as well. A special mention as well, a good friend of mine over the last number of years since I came on the panel. I've been working with him closely, Mike Larkin, we owe you a huge, I suppose, debt. Um, the work you made things so much easier over the last couple of weeks, along with yourself, Pat Kearney, John Hines, John McGann, we'd like to thank you as well. The next group of people I'd like to thank, I'm echoing the, the, the words of all my fellow panel mates, um, our family, the wives, the girlfriends, the people who put up with us day in, day out. Um, we'd like to thank them massively from the bottom of our hearts, especially my own mother and father, who have, um, I suppose, got me to this stage and now hold you huge dead address you towards them as well. Thanks thank very much. You. And finally, the 16 men were the supporters from Galway, and this is for you! <laughs> Just a couple of more people that like to thank the sponsors of the championship, Lindy Woods, Board Gosh Energy, Centra, especially our own sponsor, Supermax, Pat Numa, Una McDonough, soldiered with the county, put in massive support financially over the last 29 years, and for them to get their award today is massive, and I'd like to thank them from the bottom of my heart as well. I'd also like to thank the officials, referee, the linesmen, the umpires, the four officials, all the lads that made this possible today, also the local media, God of Aid, good friend of mine, Lyle, Sean Walsh, I'd like to thank them, and lastly, I suppose, Walker, I mess with respect um, for the management, for the players, for Kevin. Um, Claire Brass, Portugal will be on. August by law, I'll have them, lads. He'll have another day again. You're a young team, you're an up and coming team, and he'll be back. And I won't like to be here again. Three cheers to Walker. Hit me! Hit me! Hit me! Welcome back to the Wesley Blood Captain. We miss you!